Graham from Bleacher Report. I recently had family come back from a trip to Toronto, and it reminded me of when I was last there back in the summer of 2007. At the time, my older brother rode a ride called the Pile Driver, and they had uh, that they had there on one of their main strips in Toronto. It had WWE theming and everything. I didn't think too much of it as I wasn't a wrestling fan yet, but never looked into it again until the other week. Apparently, the ride was part of a bigger official WWE superstore called WWE Niagara Falls. Essentially, it was the Canadian equivalent of what WWE had in Times Square many years ago, except this one lasted a lot longer and sold a ton of WWE merch and had historic memorabilia instead of a restaurant. Were you aware of this? If so, did you ever have any desire to go while it was around? And why isn't or wasn't it talked about more as much as the Times Square one? I was aware of it, but I did not have a chance to visit it. See, I went to Niagara Falls on a family trip when I was like 10 years old. I still have the photo somewhere. We drove there. It took 10 hours in a tiny car with four other people. Uh, from what I can remember, it was fine. I mean, it was nothing terribly memorable. You, you saw the falls. It's like, okay. Uh, I would have killed for a WWE store back then. <laughs> but we were a decade too early, I guess. The reason it probably wasn't spoken about as much, it wasn't Times Square, number one. You know, WWF New York had far more visibility than Niagara Falls did. And WWF had a lot more invested in it. The, the Niagara Falls thing was a licensing play. They did not actually own the space there. They just slapped their name and logo on it without any real equity. Here, WWE was paying millions of dollars in rent every year for the space in Times Square. Do you know how much rent costs in Times Square? <laughs> it is astronomically high. Uh, even back then, I think they had to buy out the previous business there and then they were paying around $2 million a year in rent or something like that. Uh, in Niagara Falls, it really was just a store. You know, in Times Square, it was a restaurant and a store. Uh, that I went to. I went there multiple times. I, I still have my WWF New York mug, in fact. Uh, it was a fun place. You would walk in, like you'd be in the street, you're in Times Square, and you walk in, and as you enter the merch store is what you really are entering into. Uh, they had a rotation of entrance music playing on on speaker. All the merch, all the t-shirts and everything were all laid out. If you wanted to go to the restaurant, you would have to walk downstairs. That's where the restaurant was. Uh, the food was fine. I remember the burger there was pretty good. Uh, you know, wasn't uh, anything out of this world. It's like for the longest time I heard that uh, in and out Burger. Oh, in and out It's the best. And then I finally went out to California and I had it. It's like, eh, it's all right. But when I went there, when I went to the, uh, the, the restaurant in Times Square, they were filming the live cut-ins for Sunday Night Heat with the two soap opera actors that they brought in to host the show. Or maybe I think one of them was an actress. Uh, the other one may have been an MTV VJ because I think it was airing on MTV at that point. Uh, I was sad when they shut it down, but they lost like $35 million on, on, on the place. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. I mean, I think Vince lost like 60 million on the XFL. <laughs> he lost more than half that on this fucking restaurant. It's tough to open a restaurant though. Jim Ross tried it and uh, it didn't work out for him either. But that pile driver ride at Niagara Falls, that was a 200 foot drop zone ride. I, I did a ride like that once at Six Flags. The thing just, it just dropped and it went down like at a curve. And when it was over, you were just laying there on your back. This one would drop, the, the one at Niagara Falls, it would drop and then it would go back up again and it would stay up there for a little bit so you could see all the waterfalls and all the sights. And then it would drop again when you weren't expecting it. I think it actually got shut down not long after it opened. I don't know if it was a safety issue or a permit issue, something like that. But it reopened later on and everything was fine. Believe it or not, you can still ride the pile driver. And I'm not talking about, you know, what Liv Morgan is doing with Dominic Mysterio every week. If you want to ride the pile driver, you will have to fly to Amman, Jordan, because that is where the ride is now. They transported it to a theme park called Magic Land in Jordan. And as far as I know, it is still in operation. 
Vince McMahon, you know, he never had much luck with outside ventures. He won, he won an auction to buy the old Debbie Reynolds Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas, and he was going to turn it into the first ever WWF Hotel and Casino. They bought it for $10 million. They never did a thing with it. I think they eventually sold it for $11 million. So I guess they made a small profit. Uh, fun fact, the spot where that hotel and casino would have eventually stood is the exact spot where Allegiant Stadium now stands, which is the site of next year's WrestleMania. Jose, from New York City. Could you see WWE doing a PLE like Money in the Bank or SummerSlam, or maybe an AEW pay-per-view like All In or All Out at either City Field or Yankee Stadium? City Field, for those who don't know, that's the home of the New York Mets. Yankee Stadium, self-explanatory. The... Capacity for those stadiums, if you have seats on the field, you could probably get close to 50,000 at City Field, a little more than that at Yankee Stadium since it fits more people. But I don't see it happening. Cer certainly not for a big show like WrestleMania or you mentioned SummerSlam, where just logistically they would need more time to build out the stage and then break it down and ship it out of there. It takes time. It's not like they just, it's its one day and they move in and they move out. You know, they would have to move in there like a week in advance. And during the baseball season, which is a long season, so they're playing from, you know, end of March, beginning of April, all the way through October. Well, I mean, unless you're the Mets, then you're probably not playing in October. But even if the team was on a week-long road trip, I just don't think it works. So you look outside the baseball season you're dealing with the cold weather months and they're not going to run a Yankee stadium show in January. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. So I just don't think it's practical. I, I can't tell you that it will never ever happen, but it seems very unlikely to me. Although I will, I will tell you that I had heard one, one rumor that I was told uh, by someone earlier this year, I was actually when I was in Philadelphia, uh, WrestleMania week, is that uh, we could potentially at some point, it, it has been an idea that has been explored in some capacity, a WWE show in the future at Wrigley Field in Chicago. So if they run Wrigley, anything's possible. But I haven't heard anything new on that since then. But that was something that was mentioned to me many months ago. Chris from Bethlehem. I started watching the WWE Icon Show on Yokozuna. On the WrestleMania 9 telling from this show, Bruce Prichard mentions the decision for Hulk Hogan to win the championship from Yokozuna was done that weekend of the show, after Yokozuna was already predetermined to win the title and have a run with it. Bruce says the change for Hogan to win the title was for an international tour they had coming up, and that the tour was Hogan's swan song before leaving the company. What is the actual backstory of why they had Hogan win the title? Well, I mean, there isn't much of a backstory. Vince was trying to recapture the glory days with Hulk Hogan. Business was not great, and they tried to capture lightning in a bottle again with Hogan as the champion, and it didn't work. You know, Bruce has talked about this international tour stuff before and how Vince wanted Hogan to work with Yoko on the tour, and I've addressed this on the podcast once before. He is full of 100% pure grade A organic bullshit. Either that or he has got a really bad memory. First of all, WWE always did a European tour after WrestleMania back then. They always did good business over there. Even if they were having some lean days here in the States, like domestically business was not great. Uh, they typically did very well over in those European countries. Coming out of WrestleMania, they ran dates in the UK and Spain in Belgium, and Italy, and Germany, and I had to look it up because I, I thought that was it, but there was Scotland, and there was Ireland, I sound like I'm singing Joe Hendry's song now, all of these different places that they ran weeks after WrestleMania 9. Do you know how many of these shows Hogan worked? Zero. None. Not a single one of them. Yokozuna was working on most nights with Hacksaw Jim Duggan. After WrestleMania, Hogan didn't work another match until May in Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling against the great Muda. That's when he cut that infamous promo after the match about how he wants the IWGP title, even though he just pinned the IWGP champion, it wasn't for the title. He wanted the title, 
And he talked about how the WWF title, which he had there with him, it was on the dais sitting at the table. And he's talking about the winged eagle belt as just a trinket. It's like a toy compared to the IWGP belt. Totally buried his own belt and buried his own company in the process that he was still working for at that time. Now, it would have been far worse if he did that, let's say, today, because in five seconds, people would have had that video up all over social media, and it would have had a lot more eyeballs on it than in 1993, where the only way you really would have known about that is if you lived in Japan, uh, or if you were here in the States, you would have had to be subscribed to The Observer or The Torch. So, and maybe that was the idea. Oh, nobody will hear about it. Well, believe me, WWE heard about it, and they were not happy about it. Now, in the summer, he worked an international tour. He wrestled Yokozuna every single night. But that was three months later. And Hogan wasn't even the champion by that point. Yokozuna was. So what Bruce is saying does not make any sense. It was just Vince trying to milk Hogan for one last run. It was a run that Hogan wasn't even committed to. And one that he obviously didn't give a shit about because he buried his own belt to try to set himself up for a sweet New Japan gig when he left. That's all it was. 